Okay. The floor is yours. Just... Mm -hmm. Um, thanks for the introduction. Today, I would like to um, talk about compatibility graph uh, of spanning trees of simple drawings. This is a joint work with following others. And uh, these results were originally presented in uh, GD22. Uh, before going to the main question of the uh, talk, um, I will briefly explain some terms uh, in the title. Uh, first of all, Okay, just let me. Okay, <laughs> first of all, let me um, start with the definition of simple drawing. I think majority of the people in the audience already know what is a simple drawing is, or they have already heard before about it. But for the sake of completeness, I will just go through uh, in, um, regarding the simple drawing definitions. <laughs> Maybe a graph, uh, then a drawing. Uh, in a drawing of the graph, we represent the vertices by distinct points and then just by shorter than arcs and uh, in such a way that the edges uh, does not pass through any other vertex other than its end vertices. And in this drawing, we call it a simple drawing. Uh, if any pair of edges intersect at most one, either in their common end vertex or in a proper crossing which means that if you have two incident edges from a vertex, then they are not allowed to cross. And if you have two independent edges, then they cannot cross more than once. So this is the definition of symbol drawing. An example of a symbol drawing is uh, given here. So if you replace these Jordan arcs uh, by a straight line um, segments, then you will get a straight line uh, drawing of the graph. And uh, if in your drawing, there is, uh, if there is no edges crossing, then we call such drawings are plane drawings. Now let's consider a simple drawing of a complete graph K, and I call this drawing as T. For example, we take this drawing of uh, five vertices. Then I define a collection TD, which is the collection of all plane spanning trees in this drawing. So the first um, natural question is to know uh, is to ask whether this collection is empty or not. For that, um, consider any vertex and collect all the edges incident to this vertex. Then you got you will get some subgraph which is a star of this vertex. And since we are dealing with complete graphs, uh, this substructure is spanning. And since it does not contain any cycle, so this is a tree. So the only confusion is that whether it is a plane drawing or not. Uh, it will be always plain because we are in the symbol drawing. So none of the incident edges crosses. So these are all the incident edges of our red vertex. So it will, it will not cross in our symbol drawings. So the star will always be a plane spanning tree. So if we have a uh, drawing of a complete graph on n vertices, then we will have at least n plane spanning trees, which are the tree, which are the stars of each of these vertices. So this collection is non-empty. Now we define some relation among um, the elements of this collection. For that, let's take uh, two elements from this collection, which are the two plane spanning trees of our drawing. So we just only look at in plane spanning trees. And these plane spanning trees are related if the union is plane. And that property we call it as compatible. So if, if, we, if we have two plane spanning trees and their union is plane, then we call them compatible plane spanning trees. So this covers mostly the definition of our definitions in our title. Then by using this, uh, set as my our vertex set and using this relation of compatibility we define a graph which is called the compatibility graph of plane spanning trees in other words we take a plane spanning tree as a vertex and two plane spanning trees are adjacent in your uh, graph if and only if they are compatible to each other so we discuss about the property of compatibility uh, graph in a given drawing so the natural question to ask about the properties, the first the first question we can ask is whether this graph is connected or not. So that is the main uh, topic of our presentation. That is like if you're given an n integer n and you consider a complete graph kn, 
and you take a drawing of this complete graph KN, then does the compatibility graph of this drawing is connected or not? So uh, let's see what, what all things we already know about this question. If you uh, restrict simple drawings to the straight line drawings, it is known that the compatibility graph is connected. But if you look at for the general simple drawings, we don't know much about whether the compatibility graph is connected or not. But there is one result of Garcia, Pils, and Tehel, and they have proved that any maximal plane substructure is too connected. So how does this help us? Uh, for that, let's take some uh, plane spanning tree in our drawing. Then this is a plane substructure, but this is not a maximal plane sub substructure because it is not too connected. Which means that if you take any vertex of degree uh, one, then there will be uh, at least one edge, which is a plane edge, uh, so plane with respect to the drawing, that you can add to this drawing, for example, something like this. Because we need the maximal plane structure is too connected. And if you can add such an edge then into a tree, then it will create a cycle. Then you can remove any of the already existing cycle edges, which will give you a new tree from the old one. And this implies that if you take any tree, you can always get another tree which is compatible to it. That is the compatibility graph does not have any isolated vertices. But it doesn't say anything about whether the compatibility graph is connected or not. But we can use this method to form a path. For example, if you have a tree, then choose uh, one edge which is compatible to a tree and add it to the graph and remove something, you will get a new tree and repeat the process. This will give you a path uh, in your compatibility graph. And this operation, you can view it as this edge flips. So you add one edge and you remove one edge. So it's a kind of an edge flip. But uh, we have one extra condition that the, uh, the edge which you are adding into the uh, drawing, uh, adding into the plane spanning tree should be um, non cross should not cross any of the existing edges of the tree. Uh, so this gives us an idea of how to proceed. Uh, then we again came back to the symbol drawing, but it is not always easy to see which edge to add to the uh, tree or not. Uh, so that we decided to look at some special symbol drawings. So symbol drawings with some properties. As the first case, we look at the symbol drawings in which they have a special plane spanning tree, which is not crossed by any other edge in the drawing. So we can maybe call them a special spine, edge, uh, spine tree. So this green one is a special spine tree. This is not crossed by anything, any other edge of the drawing. Then it is easy to see that the compatibility graph of such drawings are connected. How? For example, take two different um, plane spanning trees uh, in this drawing. So one is a blue tree, another is a red tree. Then you can easily create a path from the blue tree to the red tree through this green special spine path because every uh, none of the edges of this blue will cross green and none of the edges of green will cross red. So we'll get a path. Uh, of length two, and hence we get a diameter of at most two. So which classes of symbol drawing have this property? Uh, uh, two page book drawings, that is um, a drawing in which the vertices are represented in, if you're representing the vertices in a straight line, the edges will lie in either the uh, upper half plane defi defined by this line or the lower half plane divided by this line. So in a two page book drawings, such a special plane spanning tree exists. And um, in that case, we can say that uh, the, compatibility, the compatibility graph is always connected and it has diameter at most two. But in general simple drawing, it is very hard to find uh, such a plane path because finding plane substructures in simple drawing is very hard. We don't know whether there exists a plane Hamiltonian cycle and so on. So this is not a good idea to study whole symbol drawings. 
so we can we should always expect there should be some edges which is crossing our nice plain spanning tree um and we call that edges as twiggly edges because these are the edges we want to get rid of so in this talk this edges uh, which makes hindrance to our procedure is called this twiggly edges so what we can do in general simple drawings uh, in this case, we consider or we fix some plane spanning tree as our spine path or spine tree. And we try to um, connect uh, or try to build a path from a given tree to this tree, to this spatial tree, by removing the twiggly edges. But in this process, if we want to remove the twiggly edges, we should know more about the drawings. So if we know more about what all uh, what are the properties of drawing, we can make use of those properties and then replace these squiggly edges. So here we really go into a special uh, type of drawings. The first case is that monotone drawings. So monotone drawings are the drawings in which no two vertices have same X coordinate and the edges are um, X monotone curves. So for example, if we, if you represent the vertices um, of the drawing in a straight line, then the edges connecting any two vertices should lie between these orange edges. So this is a forbidden edge because it is moving for um, further away from this uh, two orange edges. So such an edge is not allowed. Uh, that drawings are called the monotone drawings. So in this case, uh, we have to choose uh, a plane spanning tree, which, which is kind of our center spine um, uh, spanning tree. So here we have a nice candidate. This is uh, the tree which we obtain by joining the two adjacent uh, vertices. So our aim is to show that if you take any plane spanning tree in our given monotone drawings, it can be transformed compatibly to this uh, particular tree. So for example, let's take uh, a tree. So this is a plane spanning tree in some uh, monotone simple drawing. And our aim is to transform this, this to this green tree. What is the main hindrance? That, as I said before, there should be some edges in our tree, which is crossing the uh, spine tree. So our, our aim is to remove those edges. So how can we remove those edges? It is possible by inserting some new edges into the graph to make some path, and then we can remove these uh, twiggly edges. So let's start um, creating some edges. So if you take the first um, endpoint of the twiggly edge and to the vertex just after its first crossing, you will get something like a hump. Then uh, look at the edge, which is connecting the first um, vertex, the end vertex, to the, um, the vertex after the crossing. So that is this blue edge. So my claim is that this blue edge should be like this. We can only draw blue edge like this because for example, if you are trying to draw this blue edge in some other way, for example, going like this, it is not possible because it is crossing the um, black edge um, one. So the incident edges are not allowed to cross. You cannot draw in this way. And whatever other ways you try, if you if you want to come here without crossing it, you can go around something. But this is also not allowed because the edges should stay between these two orange lines. So whatever you draw, your edge from this vertex to this vertex will be looking like something like this blue. It, it can go a bit higher like this, but it the property of this edge will almost look like this. So this edge will exist in your drawing and you can always add that edge uh, to your uh, drawing, uh, to the spanning tree. And then you collect um, all possible uh, short edges of this uh, green tree. And then you finish off with the last um, humpy edge. 
and this edge also exists because of the same property. So now you created, uh, so now you have some blue edges from your original drawing such that when you add those edges, then you will get a cycle uh, together with the twiggly edge. So if you could add these edges, then you can remove the twiggly edges. So the number of twiggly edges decreases. So uh, if you want to add those edges, you have to make sure that these edges are plain in your drawing. So if there exists some other twiggly edge like this in your drawing, then it will cross the blue edges you want to add. So this adding is not possible. Then what can we do here? So in order to avoid the situation, we collect the twiggly edges, uh, the non-intersecting twiggly edges of our drawing and we order them in some order. So what we do is that we collect all the twiggly edges of, your, of our uh, plane spanning tree and we order them uh, says that um, which uh, has the highest y uh, coordinate. So here, if you have F and E, the twiggly edges F and E, then F is said to be the bigger than the HE. And from the collection of all these twiggly edges in your uh, plane spanning tree, you choose the maximum one. So if you choose with the maximum one, then the edge around them will be um, plain corresponding to the plane spanning trees. So I will uh, illustrate with that, with our example. So this is a plane spanning tree and I want to transform this plane spanning tree compatibly to the green spine. Thing. So first I will uh, look at what are my twiggly edges in this drawing. So these are the twiggly edges. Now I want to order them uh, and I have to find which one is the maximum. Clearly, the first one is the maximum. Now I construct the part that I constructed before along this uh, red twiggly edge. So it's a nice part. This is uncrossed because it is the maximum one. There is nobody else to cross them. So I can add these blue edges, which exist in our original drawing, to the spanning tree, which gives you a cycle, and you can remove the red twiggly edge. Then you move on with the uh, next highest twiggly edge, you do the same procedure and you delete it. Then you move on to the next one, you find the path and you delete it. And you go again and you delete it. So, But here you notice that I deleted more than one. So I usually delete the red one, but I also deleted this one. Because when I added the new uh, blue edges, this whole thing has created some other cycle. So I can delete more edges than the twiggly edge, but in each step, one at least one of the twiggly edges is removing. And finally, I will be back with the plain spanning tree, which does not have any twiggly edges. So the twiggly edges were the only edges which were crossing my spanning, the spine uh, tree. So this final tree is compatible with my spine tree. So if you take any plane spanning tree in the monotone drawing by using this procedure, you can transform it compatibly to this spine uh, path. Hence, uh, for monotone drawing, compatibility graph is connected. Next, we look at a different type of drawing, which we called strongly C-monotone drawings. So first, I will define what, it, what is a strongly C-monotone drawing. For that, I need the definition of what is a C-monotone curve. So a curve is called a C-monotone curve with respect to a point X if, um, if all the rays emanating from this point uh, crosses this curve at most uh, once. So the curve should not do anything like this. So here, the ray from the point X crosses this curve three not allowed. You can cross at most once. So it should be something like this, not like this. And to define a strongly C-monotone drawing or in a C-monotone drawing, uh, it is easy to define it if I place all the vertices in a circle. And then if I, if I place the vertices in a circle, then I choose my point X as the center of the circle. And in a C-monotone drawing, all the curves should be a C-monotone curve with respect to this point X. 
that is if i want to connect two points it should not go in this way because it will cross the ray from the center twice so this is a forbidden edge you can cross it in this way or this way but it should not go something like this and if you want to say uh, a strongly semi-monotone drawing then uh, we have to consider two um, edges of the graph and the property uh, what we are looking at is that there should be an edge from uh, there should be a ray from the center such that it should not cross both of these edges i mean it should not cross any of these edges so there should be a gap between these two edges so that the ray can pass so here in this example this is a forbidden edges in a strongly semi-monotone drawing because whatever ray you take uh, it will cross either this one or this one or both it cannot escape from this uh, thing so it, in a sense that two edges should not cover the whole circle uh, that we are defining so this is um, the properties of a strongly semi-monotone drawing with these properties we are trying to see whether a semi-monotone drawing, uh, does it have a, uh, it, the, whether the compatibility graph of semi-monotone drawing is connected or not. For that, we again start with a um, plain spanning tree in your semi-monotone drawing. And as I uh, mentioned before, we need some nice tree structure to which we want to transform it into. So what should be a nice uh, tree structure here? So for here, I'm looking at the tree connecting those uh, vertices. But uh, the next question is, is it uh, always true that the edges um, connecting the, this adjacent or the consequent points on the circle look like this or not in this strongly semi-monotone drawing? So the answer is that it should not always look like this because if you take any two vertices, they can connect in this short edge way or in a long edge way like this. This is possible. But there should there will be only one edge which is going around like this. Because if you take any other edge going around, so for example, if you take these two, and if I if I go around this one, then both of them will uh, cross more than once. So it happens that there will be one um, edge connecting the adjacent points in the uh, circle in a long way. But here, uh, what I'm uh, what I'm saying is that if such an edge exists, then the strongly semi-monotone drawing is isomorphic to a monotone drawing. Why? Because if you consider any ray uh, from the center uh, through this gap, then there will be one ray from in this area which is not crossed by any other edges of your drawing because if you if there is any other edge which is crossing your ray then they will cover the circle so this there will be one ray from the center which is not crossed by anything and you can cut through this ray and stretch the drawing so what we are getting is a monotone drawing so if you have such a long edge um, connecting two adjacent vertices of the this drawing is isomorphic to the monotone drawings. For monotone drawings, we have proved that compatibility graph is connected. So we can concentrate on the case where uh, all the edges are these short edges. So our aim is to go with, uh, take a, any for any plane spanning tree, we want to transform it compatibly to this green uh, path. So as before, uh, there will be some edges which are crossing this green path. If there is only one edge or if the edge is looking very really nice, you can do the same procedure as before. You construct these jump or this humby edges around it and you can delete it. And we have seen before that if there is an, another twiggly edge which is going above this one, it can cross these red edges. So in the previous case for monotone drawings, we ordered the twiggly edges and we took the maximum of them. But for the strongly C monotone drawing, this might not always be possible. For example, if your twiggly edges are like this, you cannot choose in 
uh, you cannot choose a maximum edge. Everything is looking very similar, so you cannot take any of the maximum edges. So the proof idea that, that we have done before will not work here. So he, here in this case, we have to use something different. For that, we rely on the rays uh, from the center. So what we do is that if you have uh, two twiggly edges, we uh, consider the rays starting from the center to the endpoints of the twiggly edges. And this defines some regions, um, some blocks, uh, something like that. And if um, there are two neighboring twiggly edges, then by using this um, arrows or this rays, you can define an area between them like this. And uh, we can prove that uh, if you want to connect uh, the point here to the point here, uh, you can connect uh, them via a path which is completely lying inside these two regions, something like that. So here it is only one edge. Uh, it might not be a points here. It can be a path other than an edge. But this path will completely lie inside this region. And you can do this for, so we consider all twiggly edges and the, um, the rays from the center um, with respect to all the endpoints. And we construct these inside paths throughout the circle. And this, uh, this will finish, this will complete the whole circle and it gives a lot of cycles which involves the twiggly edges. And once you finish constructing this whole path, you can remove all the uh, the currently twiggly edges, which are the black twiggly edges. And what happens is that if you remove those black twiggly edges, if you take any ray from the center, the number of twiggly edges crossing by it is reduced. So uh, in the original drawing here, for example, for this black ray, there are two twiggly edges, the black twiggly edges crossing it. But when you remove that, there will be only one blue twiggly edge crossing it. So here we are not completely reducing the number of twiggly edges because in some cases like this blue edge, we might have to introduce a new twiggly edge. But if you take any ray from the center, the number of twiggly edges crossing it is reducing. So we call it a twiggly depth. So twiggly depth is reducing in each case but the number of twiggly edges might not reduce. So if you continue this process again and again, then you will get a twiggly depth of zero and uh, you will be uh, compatible to the final graph. So this idea might seem like a bit uh, complicated, but I will uh, try to explain it with an example to understand it completely. Uh, now we came back to the original um, plane spanning tree. So here, as I mentioned before, I consider the twiggly edges. So these are my twiggly edges. And with respect to the endpoints of the twiggly edges, I take the uh, rays from the center and it creates regions uh, between the twiggly edges. So these are my regions. And in each region, I can have a path connecting the endpoints of the region and I construct the path. And this path uh, will give several cycles in my current drawing and I uh, remove the edges from the cycle. So finally, I can remove all the twiggly edges. Now I will add back all the non-twiggly edges back to my picture. So if there still exist more cycles, you can delete that. And here, the number of um, the twiggly depth for each ray is reduced and we do this process again and again and finally you can reach to, uh, finally you will get a, a plane spanning tree which is compatible to the green one. So in this process you can say that uh, for any strongly C monotone drawing the compatibility graph is connected. Mm -hmm. Is that clear? I hope so because it's bit complicated, but here only remember that we cannot 
take the maximal condition on twiggly edges. So we have to construct some areas between the twiggly edges and have to remove accordingly. So in this process, uh, we have looked at some special cases of um, simple drawings. Um, for example, the two page book drawings, monotone drawings and semi-monotone drawings. Uh, after that, we further try to extend this to other classes of simple drawings, but we didn't find a good uh, proof of how to prove it. So we also thought about how to attack this problem in a different way. Then we thought about, okay, let's keep a simple drawing as it is. And instead of looking at all plane spanning trees, what if we look at certain types of plane spanning trees? So we give some restrictions um, to the compatibility graph. So instead of taking the whole compatibility graph, we are only taking a small portion of it. And here we are considering special plane spanning trees. So make uh, so to be clear, I am taking uh, a drawing which is a simple drawing. Restrictions on the drawing. So. Um, we are not taking any uh, monotone drawing, so see uh, strongly see monotone drawing. Uh, so here we are just taking any simple drawing. But instead of considering the whole compatibility graph, we are only taking a subgraph of the compatibility graph and we are checking whether this subgraph is connected or not. So for that case, we are considering um, plane spanning trees. Uh, one is the star, which I already defined in the beginning. So star is a plane spanning tree. And next one is a double star. So double star is like you take a path of length one and from each of its end vertices, you, are, you have a star. So that is a double star. And then the third one is a twin star. So here you take a path of length two and from the end point of each of the path, you have trees. So these are the three, uh, three uh, plane spanning trees, which you are considering. So our question is that if D be any simple drawing of Kn, then this uh, Ft star D is a subgraph of our compatibility graph, which consists of stars, double stars, and twin stars, then whether this subgraph is connected or not. So to show that this is connected, I divide the proof into three categories. In the first category, I will show that if you take any two stars in the graph, then they are connected. And the second case, I will consider any two double stars and uh, prove that they are connected. And the third case, I will say that any two twin stars are connected. So now consider the first part. So any two stars are connected. Now let's take a, a star T, uh, which is emanating from the vertex G. And I wanted to transform into some other star T star, which is um, emanating from R. So how it does look like, for example, if you have a drawing of Kn and you have two stars here, for example, one is this red star, another is a blue star. And I wanted to transform the red star into the blue star. But here you can see that, yes, um, some edges cannot be added immediately to the red star because they are crossing the uh, edges of red star. But there are also some edges, uh, for example, this blue edge you can add because it is not crossing any of the edges of the red star. So we have to make sure that the edges we are adding from, from the blue star is not crossing the edges of the red star. So how I, how we can guarantee this condition? For that, I define some ordering uh, on the vertices of my uh, complete graph Kn, uh, like this. If you take any two vertices other than the G and R, which are the center of the star, and I say A is related to B, if and only if A, R is crossed by B, G. So the vertex A uh, from the star R is crossed by the vertex B from the star of G. And if A is related to B, I call it as A is less than B. 
So in this way, I order the vertices of the graph. And what I do later is that, so this is an, uh, a sample ordering of the vertices. And in this case, I take the vertex with the highest uh, index. So in this case, it is P4. And uh, I add the word, so I'm starting with the graph of G. I don't have any um, edges of R uh, so far in my graph. So I would like to convert it to the uh, graph of R, to the star of R. So what I do is that I add the edge V4R, which is the blue edge, and I remove the edge V4G. And here in this process, I have to make sure that V4R is not crossed by any of these red edges. In the picture, it is very clear, but how, how we can make sure this is always true? It is because of the property of our ordering. So we take the element with the highest um, index. So if, if that edge, so we take V4R. So here the highest element is V4R. Um, it it can be crosses it can be crossed by some other edge of our star G only if that element has the highest uh, index than our current one. But since we took the V four, which is the highest, so there there is no other vertices uh, that can cross uh, this edge V four R in our graph. So we are safe to add V four R and we delete uh, V four G. Then we'll go through the next uh, vertex V3 and we look for the V3R. So the only possible edge you that can cross the V3R is the V4G because that's the only one which is higher than this, but we already removed V4G from our graph. So it will not make any harm to us. So you can add V3R and remove the V3G and you can continue the process. And this and in this way you okay. transform a star in G to a star in R. So if you take any two stars, you can transform compatibly from one star to other, another star. And this finishes the first part. And the second part, we want to see that uh, any two double stars are connected. But instead of proving it directly, uh, what I am pl uh, planning to do is that I will show that a double star can be transformed um, compatibly to a star. So if you take any double star, it can be transformed compatibly to a star since any two stars are connected. So two double stars are also connected. So in order to prove the second part, I will just show that any double star is um, connected to a star. This is more easy than the previous proof. Uh, you take a double star and I wanted to transform a double star to some star. So my destination is a star in R. So here, this is a double star and I wanted to get all the edges connected to this star of R. For that, I will, for the time being, um, forget, forget these edges um, connected to R. Uh, and then what, I, what remains is a star, it's just a star in G. So now we have a star in G and there is the vertex R. By the previous lemma, you can always transform a star in G to a star in R. So in this way, I transfer the vertices of G to R by using the ordering thing. And then I will add back all the uh, edges incident to R back to this graph. And here, none of these edges will cross the newly added black edges because they are all incident edges. So this will be a plain graph and it is a uh, star in R. So this is an easy proof. And in this way, you can always transfer a double star to any star. So this part is finished. And now uh, for the last part, we have to show that any two uh, twin stars are connected. So as in the same way, I will just show that a twin star is uh, connected to a star. So let's take a twin star. And so this is a twin star and I wanted to transfer this twin star uh, to a, a star. For that, I take um, the edge between G and R. So our path was like G, S, R. 
So I connect GNR. So whether so the first question is is it possible to add this edge? So uh, it means that this edge should be a plain edge uh, with respect to the drawing. Uh, so let's check that. So the uh, if you consider the edges emanating from G, uh, a, the new newly added edge should not cross any of the edges because they are the incident edges. And if you look at the other side, yeah, these are the edges emanating from R, also the new edge GR, so they cannot cross. So all the edges in the drawing are either uh, incident to G or R, and our newly ad added edge is incident to both G and R. So this edge cannot be crossed by any other edges of the drawing, so you can always add this edge. Then if you, can, if you add this edge, it creates a cycle uh, with this G, S, and R vertices. You can remove any of those edges. Now we back to a double star. So that in, in this way, I transform the twin star to a double star. But by the previous uh, lemma, we know that any double star can be transformed to any other star. So a twin star can be transformed to any star. So this also completes the proof. And hence, we proved that the subset of the uh, compatibility graph containing stars, double stars, twin stars are connected. So we approach this problem in two different directions and these are the results. So here I haven't uh, given the proof of cylindrical drawing, but it is also um, an easy proof. You can check our paper. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, are there any questions from the audience or any comments or complaints or whatever? <laughs> we have experts here. <laughs> Like I have a naive question, like what could mm -hmm. be possible, like um, possible further research from here, like what can be done? Yes, um, one um, further question is to expand this area, like uh, expand uh, to the different classes of drawings, maybe partial level or registered drawings, but we didn't get any nice results still there seems to be a bit uh, difficult or just to see what happens to the simultaneous drawings uh, for the symbol drawing. And here um, we are also looking at, there is a concept called shooting stars. So whether we can also say that any two shooting stars are connected or not, or another way in the twins uh, star. So here we are, have a path of length two. So what happens if there is a path of length three? So in that, in, if you add that um, class to the to this class, so it's it, it, I have to define a name for it. But if you add that here, whether it is still connected or is there any uh, any issues, whether you need more structures um, to be included in the class to say that that is also connected. And so these uh, are the possible further uh, directions. Yeah. And also, um, so we, we were speaking about connectedness of this compatibility graph, but like, mm, is there any chance to like study maybe other properties of that graph or like other, I don't know, in, invariance or anything? Mm, like so far, probably, was... probably of course, like not, like of course more in, in general, because like uh, to me, like this stars, uh, star things is like sounds like very very specific somehow but like mm -hmm. so you mean instead of stars double stars to look at a different uh subclass subs um sub graph yeah. of the combat yeah but i mean is there any setting where one could also like yeah mm -hmm. think of the other properties of like such uh, compatibility graphs like mm -hmm. just uh, whatever yeah um I'm not sure what should be the other structures you can look at, but yeah. My initial idea was to increase the set so that you will cover all possible uh, plane spanning trees, then you are again prove that it is connected. Ah, it's so like uh, kind of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Either expand I... from this side or expand from this side. Oh, okay, okay. Come okay. into a, a, some point. <laughs> 
Uh, other than that, I don't know much about the properties of the compatibility graph. So we know some di diameters in these cases of O of N kind of. Maybe we can improve the diameter, um, but uh, right now I don't have what it is. Any other questions? Uh, can I ask a bit of a silly question? So, um, so given a particular like graph, like do you know what like, like I guess it's kind of all the place. So you start with the drawing and end up with a compatibility graph. So given a graph, do you know like what sort of drawings would give yield that kind of a particular compatibility graph in the other direction? Uh, sorry, uh, if you're taking a drawing, then uh... so okay, so in your construction, you have a drawing, you end up with some compatibility graph. So my question is, given yes. given a compatibility graph, do you know what drawings can yield that? Ah, okay. If you have a compatibility graph, then guess which drawing is behind it. Um, okay. So far, I only know uh, that the compatibility graph is connected. Uh, okay. So I cannot guess what is behind, but uh, it's a nice direction to study more about the properties of compatibility graph and how it is related to the drawings. But currently, I have no idea how the compatibility graph looks like for the even the given drawing. So here for the two-page book drawing, it looks more like a star. So maybe I can assume that. But is the only only the two-page book drawings? Ah, uh, yeah, by the isomorphism, it can be true. But yes, but I'm not sure about the other cases. Um, here it's mostly look like a star, the compatibility graph. But for the other cases. Um, I think it will be difficult. Uh, yeah, but I haven't uh, done anything in this direction. So. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you for the question. Uh, yes, I have a question. Uh, so, uh, what if we take a compatibility graph of a compatibility graph? So, uh, will we? We'll get, uh, uh, like, is it uh, possible to return to the initial graph? Uh, the compatibility graph of, com so, okay. Um, I understood what you're asking, but. Uh, for... So it looks like interesting transformation of the graph and maybe mm -hmm. for some graphs it's, so dual in some sense. Uh huh. But the compatibility here we are talking about the com compatibility graph of complete graphs, and if you take the just the compatibility graph as the main thing, then it will will not be a complete graph. It need not be a complete graph. Then there might be only one. So for example, if you take the two page book drawings, uh, if I remember correctly, the compatibility graph is just a star. And if you consider the compatibility graph on the star, so there is only one plane spanning tree, then it will be single node. Right? Um, did you understand what um, I'm saying? So, may, I, may I ask? Sorry. Yes. Yes. Uh, how would you do? Um, how would you define compatibility on the abstract graph? That's maybe an, a crucial ingredient um, for that because we have the drawings first of all for for abstract graphs. We don't have the notion of compatibility of two trees at the moment. Uh, so what I thought is that uh, we are uh, for a complete graph, we are considering a drawing of it. So I can maybe for for example, if a star, um, whatever drawing I have, it's it's mostly like a star. I mean, it doesn't do much much things wrong. Uh, so. Yes, uh, I understood the point. I, we have to look for the drawing of the compatibility graph first and then decide on it. But I think we cannot come back to the compatibility graph uh, in all, no, not in all cases. Um, uh, but I don't know much about the other structures, how it look. Um, is it a cycle or is it a complete graph that I don't know. So I don't know what happens for the other cases. But at least for two page book drawings, I think compatibility graph, if you take the kind of a square of compatibility graph, the like compatibility graph of the compatibility graph, it will not reach back. It will end up in a one point, uh, and then you will end up zero because you don't have any trees there. Yeah. 
but uh, for most compatibility graphs, there might, there might not be a plane drawing. So the graph itself is not plane, so there is nothing compatible to it with that definition. So it, if, mm -hmm. if the compatibility graph is too dense so that it cannot be drawn without uh, crossings, then this definition doesn't make sense. So I have another question because you mentioned there's an open problem, all these classes of graphs to show or other classes of graphs to show that the compatibility graph is connected. But do you think that just for general simple drawings, it is connected or do you think there is some type of simple drawings where it is actually not connected? Because that would be the, I think yeah. the biggest goal uh, to think about not the subgraph of the drawings, not cylindrical drawings, monotone drawings, but just simple drawings in general. So what, what's your feeling about that? I believe that it is connected, <laughs> okay. but I'm not sure. Because for the C monot if, if I'm just looking at the C monotone drawings, uh, I couldn't, I, co I don't have any counter example, but at the same time, uh, mm -hmm. it, it feels uh, very hard to prove that it is connected. So for the general drawings, since the edges can do many things, so, uh, so what we are doing here is to remove the twiggly edge and add some appropriate edge to make a cycle. But in the general graph, um, these edges can do very nasty things. So uh, it is difficult to prove, but I believe that it is true. So <laughs> like you think we, it's, it's... We believe that there is a plain oh. Hamiltonian cycle. It's like, I don't you know. Think it's, it's more likely that it's true than that you can find the context. OK, thanks. <laughs> Any other questions? If not, I'm stopping the recording.